this is an important point. You can run out of dollars. You can run out of euros and so on. If you're in India, you can run out of rupees. But when you issue your own currency, right, it's circulating in your city. There's been around the Let's talk about communities. So right now on the internet, there are tons of different communities. Okay. So you want to build currencies for them. You can think of these communities as essentially some organization or some influencer has done the work. They became popular and they have all these members and they're following them for some reason. Or it could be some kind of a YouTube channel or a Twitter account, right? They may have Facebook groups and Reddit forums. And the question is, uh, you know, what are they trying to do? Well, first of all, they're trying to monetize their user base, right? They're trying to get money from all these followers and trying to use that money to grow their community. So another thing they want to do is grow and attract other people. Okay. Second thing is sometimes in the community, you want to actually have rewards and punishments for certain things. For example, if you have a collaborative project like Wikipedia, you'd like to reward people's contributions and you want to make it costly to disrupt and vandalize pages, right? So you need to have a system where there's an internal currency. And this should work even if people have massive outside resources. So they can't like just rebuy every time they're penalized, they're just going to rebuy more currency to grow your community and so on. Having your own currency is like a superpower. So this is, I'm going to go through a few steps of what they need to do. And the beautiful thing about Intercoin is it helps with every single one of these steps. And as we'll see, Andrew Yang's attempt at uh, universal basic income on the national level can actually be implemented on local levels. And by the way, he's running for mayor of New York City right now. So he may actually want to use this if he ever wins um, or any of the mayors, which I'll get to mayors for a guaranteed income. There's mayors all around the country who want to use this kind of system, including these guys. And I'll explain about that. So, okay. So we basically have um, communities that want to issue their own currency and we want to discuss how and why they're going to do that. First of all, if you have your own currency, you can get things done without having to raise a lot of capital in federal currency, fiat, Bitcoin, Ethereum, without having to do that. So for example, right now we have issued Intercoin tokens, right? So this is kind of like a meta example. Um, people on GitHub constantly contribute to projects. They contribute to open source projects. This is a way to actually compensate them for their work. So it's not just developers, it's also marketing, PR and other services can be paid out using your own token. But of course people can also buy it as you'll see as I go through this. But it lets you basically get things done right away. It's kind of like when you do a startup and you have shares and you just give out the shares, but you didn't raise any money yet, but you can already start working and kind of fairly distributing the, uh, the compensation. Also, because your currency is only really for your community, it always circulates within your current community. So you never really run out of it. This is an important point. You can run out of dollars. You can run out of euros and so on. If you're in India, you can run out of rupees. But when you issue your own currency, right, it's circulating in your city. And that becomes really important when I get to actual cities. So once you've issued your own currency, which Intercoin helps you do, like I said, with its app, the user-friendly interface, instead of having to use, uh, you know, having to use a MetaMask or these geeky things like this, uh, where you can, uh, or, or Etherscan, which is like, most people don't know how to use any of this uh, stuff. Um, all of this stuff is not how we want people to uh, be engaging with, um, with the smart contracts. We want to have an interface. The next thing you want to do is distribute it to people who will spend it, the consumers. So the first step is to get it in the hands of the consumers. There's two objectives you can achieve with that. One is you want to grow your community. So you reward people for inviting 
new guests. For example, here, if I invite people to, I don't know, let's say I'm at an event and I'd like to invite people to the event. There you go. Okay. So if I want to invite people to the event, if I post it on Facebook, this is what that looks like. The event photos here, the description, the, you know, the title of the event. And let's say I just say, just testing. I'm going to delete this later. So this event has now been posted to Facebook. And so what's going on here is that um, if I go to Facebook and I actually see, if I go to my profile here, I'm not even sure, there it is, okay. I go to my profile, it shows up there, but anyone who clicks this event, I'm gonna open it in a new tab just to show you. It goes to, it, it, what it just did is it actually tracks who invited whom. And so if I get new users to come, for example, if I did the same thing over here in a new, as a new user, this is an incognito window, so I'm kind of like a new person. I'm coming to this event. Whenever I want to uh, do anything in this event, I'll have to sign up. Uh, so for example, I'd like to join or, or do anything, or I'd like to say hi, right? I won't be able to, I'll have to sign up. And as I sign up, uh, the person who invited me is gonna get a bunch of credits. So that's one. Another thing is, reward the people who signed up. So you know how like you can invite someone to a service and they get some credits and you get some credits, right? That's the idea. So that's to grow your community. And then also to increase engagement, like to reward people every day for just logging in and participating, maybe sharing content, maybe discussing like I just did. Um, this is a form of universal basic income. This is already starting to explain how you're getting people reward, rewards just for being part of the community, right? Every day that they open the app, you get a few credits. So you got your credits in the hands of your members and that's great. And now they're trying to invite people, they're watching your videos, maybe they're earning one uh, credit for every minute of the video that they watch. It depends how you wanna do your tokenomics. So the next thing is you're ready to approach the people who are vendors providing services on your platform. So that could be employees, that could be contractors, and you could pay them hourly, or you, you could pay for specific products and services. Just as an example, Bitcoin, the network is autonomous, but it pays the miners in Bitcoin, right? Ethereum pays the miners in Ethereum. You know, Binance chain pays miners in BNB tokens and so on. Whether it's mining with proof of work or proof of stake or any other thing, they're paying for the services of securing the network and advancing the blockchain, and they're paying in their own currency. So that's just one example, but you could pay people in your own currency for more than just running a node. You could do all kinds of things. And so also, sometimes a community does not know who they're going to pay. So what we have here is we've built smart contracts. Norman can tell you, we've built smart contracts where he, for example, as the team manager, we can delegate to him a certain amount of tokens. This could be our token, it could be Ethereum, it could be whatever, as long as it's digitized. And then we set up, essentially, he's a manager, he's managing these, these, these people, and we set up limits of how much they can uh, spend. There's a credit card uh, example of this called privacy.com, where you can set up virtual credit cards and literally uh, just enter them on websites, and each one can be used by a different employee and there's limits. So that's the idea that's essentially done with a smart contract here. So whether you're paying employees or contractors, you wanna delegate that to roles like managers and so on. And you want to be able to control that on chain. So everybody sees exactly who's getting paid out and how much, and there's not really that much corruption that can happen. Okay, so uh, the idea is everything in the organization can be seen and we, it's on the blockchain, okay? Similarly, sometimes you don't know who you're going to pay because you have a problem to solve, but you don't know who's gonna solve it. Like for example, with 99designs.com, uh, uh, if you wanna get a logo, but you don't know which exactly uh, person is gonna do the logo, um, we have uh, contests so people can compete. And only a few of the entrants will actually win, uh, but they can win a lot more. So the idea is here that you get judges and they essentially, it's all on the blockchain again. Um, and people 
in the community pool their resources and they invite people, other people to enter as teams and compete to solve whatever problem they're trying to solve. Content, you know, maybe they want to clean up their streets, maybe they want to help their homeless problem. There are going to be teams competing of how to get things done, plan a festival. So contests and disbursements are how you would pay vendors. And again, I've been talking about online communities. I'm going to start talking about real world communities in a couple of slides. Step four. So you've been paying people in this currency, but sometimes these people need to actually get outside resources. For example, you're going to a coffee shop. It has to actually import coffee, right? From Colombia or some other country. Uh, and so they need to pay them. So there are going to be, I'm going to get in step five about how the intercoin network will help communities pay each other. But this step is actually more about how to get people to buy and sell your local currency. So essentially you allow members and visitors to purchase the local currency at a discount. And the idea here is that once they get your currency, they have a 5% discount, for example, on everything in your community, right? Because the vendors that you got in the previous step, the people who are creating the content or providing services to the consumers, right? They are going to be essentially getting everything at a 5% discount organically. And when the vendors cash out, they're going to get a 10% loss. And I'll explain why that's actually important. So people can buy your currency, they get a 5% discount. And then also when the vendors cash out, they get a 10% loss. So you can afford to give the 5% discount as a community and still have 5% for things like, for example, um, tax, uh, you, could, you could actually have your own UBI, universal basic income or infrastructure or things you wanna do as an organization, which I'll explain. Here are the consequences of these two decisions. If people are buying it, it results in a discount on everything in the community. I just said that part. This is a more interesting part. By cashing out, it results in a loss. So there's a bit of friction. So think about like when you liquidate your PayPal balance and you cash out to your bank, right? Which is another payment network, but it's one that's widely accepted and people rely on it although now crypto is trying to take its place and, and compete with it. So imagine PayPal. A lot of people have a balance inside PayPal and they say, okay, um, you don't have PayPal. Would you like to get an account? You're going to get a free $20. I get a free $20, right? And then also I will pay you using PayPal. It's seamless. It's easy. And I don't have to lose money cashing out. So this is what happens. Everyone is trying to recruit everyone else to accept your currency. And that's what expands the network effect, right? The network effect is the more people are on the currency, the more valuable it is to every member. Um, something like N log N, more valuable. There, there's a uh, law, it's called, um, oh, I forgot right now, but basically network effect. Um, it's called uh, Metcalf's law. And basically it thinks that if there are N people in the community, then let's say N fax machines at, at that time, then uh, fax each fax machine is N times more valuable. So it thinks that the total value of the network is N times N or N squared. It, I think it, it, research has shown this is way too optimistic. It's more like N log N. So in other words, the more people join, the more valuable each thing is, but it's actually, you're not gonna connect to everybody, you're gonna connect to like 100 people. This is called Dunbar's number. Uh, it basically talks about how many friends you can really maintain, how many relationships you can really maintain. Uh, it comes out to about 150, I believe, or 120. And so that's kind of the limit. But again, Facebook becomes more and more valuable as more and more people use it. And that's what having this friction cashing out is all about. Think about when people tried to get you into Bitcoin. Hey, do you accept payment in Bitcoin? I'll send you some Bitcoin. That's how that happens because it costs money to cash out. So we've been talking about setting up your own local community over here. We've been talking about you've created your currency. You've got it in the hands of consumers. You've approached your vendors and you've said, okay, please accept this currency. And they said, okay, well, I mean, I can accept some form in, in some of my payment in this currency. 
And you've even been able to help people to cash in and cash out. You've set up your city and now it works. And there's cities like this around the world. But the problem is that the currency is not really usable. If a person goes on a trip or they just go visit another social network somewhere else, how are they going to use their balance on this one to pay for that one? That's where the intercoin network comes in. The intercoin network is basically the internet of coins. So just like we are right now on our own networks, I'm on my local network, you're on yours, and then there's an internetwork of networks. That's what internet is short for. Internet connects all of our networks. So similarly here, intercoin connects all the coins. And the idea is that intercoin is a decentralized exchange, actually, because it's essentially allowing you to take your coins in any of these communities and use them in any other seamlessly. So the person here, Detroit coins, suppose there's a restaurant in Detroit, they're actually receiving their payment in Detroit coins. So they can pay the local plumber, they can pay the local uh, piano teacher, their employees in that coin. But then if you, uh, you yourself could be from, let's say um, some other thing like a Wikipedia coin. So you've been working on Wikipedia and you've been earning this currency and now you just wanna eat in this restaurant, but you wanna use your Wikipedia coin. So Intercoin helps to create total liquidity between each and every pair here and does more than that. Intercoin, we're moving to actually have it being traded on exchanges. And so these are essentially outside the United States, just to put it, uh, for now it's outside the United States. Uh, we're also talking to secondary trading platforms in the United States like T0 and others, but right now it would be traded just like any other token outside the United States. Um, so it would be trading against dollars, euros, right? Ethereum, Bitcoins, and so on. So what happens? If your currency joins the Intercoin network, you don't have to list your currency on all of these exchanges. You don't have to call them up, pay listing fees, do all these things, because all you would have to do is Intercoin already acts as a gateway in and out of your network. All you have to do is run your network and use our software and we'll take care of everything. So not only do we take care of the technology, we will also take care of the liquidity and the regulations for your country. And essentially all you have to do is just, you've got an organization, great. Buy some Intercoins to back your community and then you're on the network. So, okay, so Intercoin, by joining the Intercoin network, the community gains access to the network effect of the entire Intercoin network, which is a lot bigger than their community especially if you just started a project. You don't have a big network effect. No one cares about your token, but that's okay because people will care about the overall Intercoin network. So using your token, you can already get started and the rules are well-defined. So you can even buy stuff from Amazon and so on using your token as more and more people actually buy it. And so they can buy it through the Intercoin network. You don't have to worry about all the stuff that people worry about today. Join the intercoincommunity.org. Literally just go to community.intercoin.org, right? Yeah. And sign up. And then what I'd like you to do is if you have any questions, don't be shy. Start a new topic, right? And just even if you don't have any questions, just introduce yourself. We have a thing here, like it's going to show up, like introduce yourself. And mm -hmm. we're going to reach out to you because what I want is not just for people to invest in Intercoin. I want people to understand Intercoin and to get involved in, and join the movement, right? And we can only do that if we are all kind of communicating and we're all building it together. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, you know, you can either drop your email in the chat if you haven't already or just sign up on the site and we will uh, circle back. Thank <laughs> you.